to just get in there. Okay, I took off the uh, damper that's in the back of the Laurel to be the mustache bar that'll be on the uh, 280Z. And I just originally thought that the uh, CV Giants wouldn't actually work for me. And then you put them here, you see that the lead is totally wrong. I didn't realize that the whole lot of this can compress right in. It actually compresses back way shorter than the current shaft. So I think I'm actually in luck. So essentially what I'm gonna to have to do, get a little converter plate made for here. That'll match up to that fella there. And uh, this will bolt right in. And I have upgraded to CV joints. So that gets rid of one of the biggest, weakest links when you up the power. Okay, so that is the uh, R200 diff, which we know is uh, one of the stronger ones out there for the car. Uh, it's long though, so it'll fit straight in. The uh, shafts then are going to work and that get rid of the uh, one of the weaker links which is right here on the cv joint right there um i've got a s14 gearbox going into this uh i think they're able to handle around four 450 brake horsepower without uh, too much uh, issue i love the bell house from my four speed gearbox which uh, i will talk about a little bit more uh to bolt onto that and then we just basically need to upgrade the clutch then when the engine's in the car uh, I don't really, really need to worry too much about uh, anything downstream from there. I can start piling on the boost and seeing how much this uh, L28 can handle. So guys, I am no expert on this in any way at all. Um, anything I've learned on this has been nearly off the internet. And I'm hanging around with Datsun guys that have a little bit more experience than I do, but the best thing you can do is just get in there and get to know this stuff. I'm so happy with this. I think there's a left and the right, so we have to be a little bit careful. Just get some oil in there. We have to be also careful. So, shorter one for that side. The diff is out. Now, when we go to the R200, I think we have to bore out the two holes on the uh, mustache bar. And we also have to flip this the other way. Actually, no, sorry. Flip it the other way, so that that side is on that side. Basically means that, that this hole will be in front, as opposed to from being behind. And uh, then they're interchangeable. So I think in the background now, we'll just go clean that one up, uh, get it prepped and uh, pop it in. So if anyone's looking for a nice R180, let me know. So I wasn't a good YouTuber when I did the last bit there. Um, I split the diff down and uh, we got access to the inside of it. Now, as you can see there, um, the uh, ratio is 37 to 9, which is 4.11. So as you know, or maybe not know, uh, the diff is 3.5 on the normal manual for this car. So it's uh, quite a step down on uh, ratio, which uh, to me is actually really, really good because uh, it's going to give you more torque at the back wheels and more uh, acceleration up to 100. Uh, might rev a little bit higher. I'm going to counteract that then by uh, having the fifth gear on the um, the S14 gearbox uh, that's going to go into it. So that's going to counteract any high revs uh, accumulate from that. I'll go into a few numbers here just so you can see what the ratio looks like. Let's do a comparison. This is the uh, four speed gearbox that I have. These are the ratios and you can see there that fifth gear is just not there. And the differential that came standard in this car was a 3.36. Now, if we were to uh, compare that to the SR20, you can see that the gear ratios are a bit shorter on each of these. And uh, there's an extra gear there for fifth. Uh, it's down to 0.759. Uh, we're not gonna be worried about, worried about the differential on the um, this side, uh, because we're not using it. So if we look at putting the gearbox from the SR20 inside the, uh, the four-speed uh, bell housing, uh, this is what we get. And at the end there, you can see that's a 4.11 ratio, which is that uh, R200 differential. You can see that uh, uh, things change quite a bit. So let's do a comparison here to see how much to change. So if we were to look at um, 6,000 RPM in first gear for each of these gearboxes, so let's say what I have now and what I'm planning to have, you can actually see that the... Um, 
the RPM at the back wheel in first gear at 6,000 RPM is 500 RPM. Or when I go with this new gearbox and new differential, uh, that's actually going to reduce down to 440 RPM. So that's going to equate to a 13% increase in torque in first gear. Okay, let's look at a uh, top gear just to see what the revs are like uh, when we're cruising along, making sure that it's not too uh, revvy. So I've roughly worked out that if your back wheels are turning at 830 wheel RPM, and uh, that's going to equate to about 100 kilometers per hour or 62.5 miles per hour. So I just wanted to see what way the uh, engine will be revving in top gear. So top gear for the four speed is obviously four. So that actually equates to uh, the engine revving at 2,800 RPM, so quite high. And if you go over to uh, the setup I'm looking to get, uh, it'll actually be revving at 2,600 RPM. So I'm getting the best of both worlds. I'm getting extra torque in the lower down gears, but when I get up into fifth, uh, she's not revving as high. So uh, definitely seems to be a big uh, advantage in flipping over to this new setup. So we'll just look at calculating the torque gains throughout the gear range. Okay, so here you can see that we've got a first gear, as we said before, 13% gain. Second gear is fairly close, only a 4% gain. Third gear, 13% gain. And then fourth gear, we actually get a 22% gain. And then, as we said before, fifth gear, then is just to quieten the engine down. So when you're cru cruising along. Okay, spent a couple of days with the R200. I just put on some uh, rust inhibitor, zinc, and then paint on the outside. And now I'm starting to do the reassembly. Um, I think I've learned my mistake from the last time to make sure that this member is forward all the bolt holes not back and then that way it should line up all going well um, I've never done this changeover before but we'll see how we get on I've also bored out these to uh, about 20 so the R200 centers are out further so essentially the bolt holes are going to be to the edge here and probably to the inside edge here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another plate welded onto the back of this just to give it extra strength um, I see a lot of reports online where they say that the uh, the uh, cross member breaks here um, after a few months of a uh, hard kind of take off and I think a lot of the issue is that because these are overboard they're just for the slightly wider centers of bolts there's just not enough material there so we'll just plate this up here at the back here and make it stronger so I think I've got it assembled correctly this time two bolts torqued down at the front the damper torqued underneath and this cross member attached and these two bolt holes as we know are spread further so we're going to move it in and kind of lift it into position and then just see how uh, close our moustache bar is see what kind of modifications are needed there so let's move her in Okay, so the diff is lifted up into place and I have reversed the uh, angle on this uh, cross member and as you can see we've got a couple of issues one it's back further when we flip it over which makes sense because there's actually a bend on the uh, on the cross member as you can see back there it's the same on this side which is going to pull it back further than where it's meant to be so we're going to try and see if we can tweak it forward and see if it's able to um, get back to uh, reaching around the vertical drops either side. Um, and then actually see if we can bend this by hand. I might try and see if we can catch it into some solid air and just give it a tug. See if we can get this to play ball. We'll straighten it first, see how close we are, and then we'll start kind of kinking uh, the ends back. If we're able to make it reach, then we'll uh, strengthen the uh, bar back where I opened up the two holes back there. So everywhere is closed today, so I can't go off and get this uh, pressed in a brake press to get pushed back the other way. So I'm just gonna have to go old school and flip it over myself. Um, I've bolted it onto the skid steer, as you can see. It's actually a success. So looking down at it now, you can see that I'm bent back the other way. This one is actually being pulled back the other way just by the, uh, the uh, strap. So that actually kind of comes out here normally so uh, let's see just release the strap and you can see how far it comes out and just judging by that I'm not as excessively uh, pulled back there but I think we'll uh, we'll go a little bit at a time we're kind of going in there maybe five degrees there at this stage you can see how much we've gained 
this is in front of the bucket that is behind the bucket there so uh, we flip it over to the other side now these fellas and try and see if they'll fit down behind that. Uh, might get lucky. Okay, I'll show you my predicament. So that fella is supposed to hold up there and give support to this fella which is supposed to be oriented this way. It kind of comes down on the inside here. Uh, you can see that in the last video. You just want to click that corner there. How they are oriented. But um, for this case, it's not going to work. So what I'm probably going to do is flip that fella that way and bush out this section here, put a little space for plate, see which uh, uh, matches up best. So, hello. I'm company today. The only one's one thing down there is to hop up there in the lap. Hi, Ninja. Yeah, put on the uh, wishbones and kind of knuckle them tight here and here just to see how everything kind of rests together and you can see that this kind of floats left and right so it's these uh, uh, drop downs that actually kind of lock that into position now by me flipping this forward I have the angle kind of coming down here and it's stopping just the head of the game here so by rights the easiest way for me to do this now is to knock this tab in parallel to here, not parallel, flush to here, and uh, weld it. And then I can basically put off a little web to one side here, and then that end is completely rigid. So to make sure everything lines up first, it would probably be best to uh, knock, knock that in, uh, put in a couple of bushes here just to kind of take up the space so that I know that it would be lined up this way in relation to itself. And uh, then it can get locked in, so if it was to ever be dropped out then, it's just a matter of undoing those bolts on that side, as opposed to having them coming on this side. So, uh, technically speaking, it will be as strong as before, once we get a you know, nice web up this way. And um, yeah, absolutely no other problems other than that. And so I think that's the approach I'm gonna take. So here are the two brackets, back to back. Um, I bent one, uh, put it in place and then I kind of etched out the curve of the plate where it's going to meet. I'm going to assume, hopefully not to my detriment, that this is a mirror image of each other. Uh, so I'm going to use the curve of this one, mark it out as one, cut it, marry it up to uh, the uh, other piece and make these three plates one plate. That'd be out. So you can see the uh, old holes, the way they're lining up from where we were before. There we go. And where are we? There we go. So these plates sit in just a little bit off the edge, as you can see here, I have them cut to shape, as you can see up there. And I've gone on both sides, top and bottom, and cleaned off all the paint. So now that I have that in position, I kind of have it held up with cable ties. I'm gonna put a couple of tacks on it, and uh, then we can unbolt the whole lot and weld. And that will get rid of that problem. Uh, what we'll do is we'll probably put a little uh, kind of triangle flange here as well, or maybe a flat plate, just to kind of, uh, give that extra little of uh, rigidity, but uh, she looks good. Okay, she's welded inside and out. A little bit of a brute of a weld, but it doesn't need to be good looking. It needs to be strong. It's holding on to half your back axle in all fairness. So that's the uh, plate welded in, except for I'd like to support both sides of the plate. So I might put on a little flange here and here. It'll stop any kind of a uh, rotating effect on it. Now in all fairness, the way it was before, been clamped on one side, it would have had a rotating effect on it. But um, I think the more rigidity we add to everything, the better. Kind of goes along with the uh, philosophy of putting in box section on the uh, the under chassis here. If any of you guys haven't seen that uh, episode, uh, you can click in the top right hand corner there and uh, you'll see me in the earlier days installing that. Uh, but uh, yeah, happy out. This is gonna be nice and solid. 
and a couple of flanges welded in just to complete it. Not quite triangular, but it's just to kind of uh, stop any kind of twisting effect on it. Alright, I found my plate that I'm going to use up. It's a bit dirty. I'm going to clean it up. That I'm going to use for you know, reinforcement. It's going to be sitting basically somewhere like this. Make it look a bit neater. And I have dot punched two uh, holes based off the actual R200 old mount that was on it. So now we know we've got those centered up. So I'm going to board these out and uh, we'll bolt the two of them together and see how we can make them look good. Alright, drilled it out and fed two bolts through. Now we know that that one fits. So I'm probably going to chop off these underneath here and leave the uh, web above and that'll give it a nice uh, tensile strength on uh, that point. So we'll chop that off, uh, we'll trim these off and uh, we'll weld her up. Okay, that's the plate profiled out. This will essentially line up here and that'll get rid of the issue with the widened holes inside and it'll be welded all the way around. Um, so just because this plate here that I um, recycling is pitted, I'm just going to give that a little go with a rust inhibitor um, just to make sure that it doesn't start rusting down along the line and uh, give it a clean off tomorrow and weld up. Alright all, um, we got the rust converter put on this here uh, last night and given it the day to set in there now and it's uh, made the plate much more uh, appealing to the eye. So I'm going to go and fire this two components together and we're going to give it a weld up probably tack it first and just make sure that it does fit before we go and commit to the whole weld so I'll pop it into position and it fits really really well it actually keeps the uh, the flat of the plate here spot on uh, the only issue I have is that it's a little bit close to the fuel line so I might just give a bit of a recess just in case there's a humongous jump on the plate and she to kick the lines and potentially either cut it off or create a leak I'm also hoping that that extra six mil there that's on that doesn't step it out too close to the tank but I can only presume that if the bolts are there uh, out that far that then the tank won't be out that far but other than that that's a rock solid job So I welded around all the way, obviously it's going to be well bolted there so there's going to be no issue there. Relatively solid weld all the way along. Um, welder started doing a little skip and jump thing there, it was kind of really annoying there when you're trying to maintain a nice weld like this and then she starts kind of spluttering on you. I don't know if any of you guys have got uh, more experience in welding than I do to understand why you get a, a judder on, it's like the feed. It's not making the proper ground or something like that. She starts going. Tick, tick, tick. So, any advice there? Let me know. Maybe the uh, feed is too high for uh, the uh, temperature. I'll just finish off that little corner there and I'll get that nicely rounded in. But uh, that is one solid piece of mustache bar. There you go, folks. That is the reinforced um, mustache bar. I'm gonna paint this up now. You can see I've got the little recess there for that. Kind of slightly weakened at that point, but to be quite honest, I think this is way overkill in comparison to uh, the actual R200. So we're going well overboard. I'll just flash up a picture there of the difference between a R200 and R180 mustache bar. You can see there that they are uh, quite similar, just a bit beefier in around where it's bolted to the diff itself. But overall, the rest of it, the rest of it seems to be quite similar. So uh, in relation to this, this is a. Uh, overboard which is no harm so that's what I've done I have painted the uh, crossbar the same paint that I used for uh, my rotor rotisserie which actually funnily enough ended up being almost identical to the color for the car itself so I'm going to bolt it up underneath now and uh, have the whole lot locked up in place and that's a load of bolt cleaned off the floor
All right, folks, the uh, diff is in, as you can see. Um, our swing arms are in as well. And as you can see, it all fits in quite nicely. Um, so we're just going to go and uh, leave this for now. Um, we'll obviously have a bit of work later on when we have the flange out here that's gonna be connected onto the axle. We'll have to do that again in another episode. But for now, we've got a lot of this stuff off the ground. Happy days. Alright folks, that's as far as we're going to take it there now. Now next week we're going to go off and get a few extra parts. So we've got an air dam, we've got a spoiler, uh, we've got the S14 gearbox that we're going to get. We're going to use the front end bell house and front end of the gearbox. I made that with the back end of the uh, S14. So it'll actually give us something that's capable for about 350 to 450 brake horsepower in around the park where we're going to try and push this L28. All going well. Let's see how we get on. And uh, after that then we've just got an ECU, uh, we've got the Haltac uh, 950, so we're going to go over and grab that and the remains of a wiring loom that I'm uh, hopefully able to uh, make a mash up against the L28 here. That's it for this week guys, uh, we'll talk to you guys soon, take care, bye bye.